It's time for another Dice Tower Review with John Richard. Howdy gamers, greetings from Indianapolis, Indiana, the gaming capital of the world. It's time for another board game review with me, Indiana John. Today we're taking a look at Concept, which is from Asmodee Games and was a nominee for the 2014 Spiel des Jahres. Uh, now this is a game that's in a very interesting genre that I like to call the getting other people to guess something genre. <laughs> and so this is, would fall into the category of things like charades or uh, scattergories, taboo, things like that. Um, so, you know, it's sort of a party game, but not necessarily. It's it's you know, just sort of a light um, family sit around the table sort of a game uh, where you're trying to get people to guess particular things that are on a card, but in a very unique way that I've never seen before. So. Uh, let's take a look at the setup and gameplay of Concept and see if we can answer that all-important gamer question, is it fun? So this is the board for Concept, it's a very colorful board, and it just consists of a series of columns of all of these different squares with different pictures in them. And these pictures represent the concepts or ideas that are at a player's disposal to try to get the other players to guess whatever idea or object might be on their card. Uh, now there's just the pictures on the board, but the, the game comes with a series of these uh, double-sided uh, reference guides that will show what each of the squares mean. You know, so for example, you'll have things like animals and movies, television shows, um, you know, transportation and food. Uh, you'll also have more abstract concepts like uh, you know, straight lines and circles and shapes, cubes, and, and whether something is big or small or something like that. So lots of different ideas that you can use in this game. So this is the, the board, and then you also have a, a rather large deck of cards that have all of your different uh, clues on them. The cards themselves have three different categories of clues or three different difficulty levels. Uh, there's a uh, easy, a medium, and a hard level. And so you can, uh, throughout the course of the game, can sort of decide which ones you want to use. Uh, it's uh, sort of entirely up to you. Uh, the game also comes with these little pawns that represent different concepts and sub-concepts that you're going to be trying to key in on. This one is for the main concept. It's got a, it's a big uh, question mark. Uh, and then you also have these sub-concept ones that are little exclamation points that are also going to go onto the board. We'll show you how that works in just a minute. Additionally, you get what appears to me to be a dog dish <laughs> that has all of these cubes you can put in it. And those cubes are pretty much ideas or sub ideas that are going to branch off of the main concept. So if you have a main concept that's green, uh, you might have some cubes that will go along with that green. Again, we'll talk about that in just a second when we go over, I'll give you an example of one of these ideas. But um, those are the main uh, components. You also have some points that are represented by these cute little um, light bulbs. There are double points that are given to the um, player who guesses an answer, and then single points for the player who uh, relays an answer that is uh, successfully uh, gotten, you know, gotten correct. So we'll talk about that in a second. So these are the, all the main components of concept, and let's talk about how we play a round of this very interesting game. Now in the actual rules of the game, it says that two players that are sitting next to each other are gonna form a team, and they're gonna select one of these cards, and then try to get all the rest of the players at the table to guess what's on the card, working together using this board. Um, I actually haven't played in that fashion yet, um, I, although I, I need to probably try it that way. Uh, we, I've just been done it as having a single player grab a card and then try to get everybody else to guess. Uh, so I, th I think this game really does lend itself real well to house rules like that, and there's a lot of flexibility that you can use here as to how exactly you want to give and receive the different clues in the game. So, um, but at any rate, whether you're gonna use one or two players, uh, you're gonna select one of these cards and you're gonna pick one of the items that's on the card to try to get uh, someone to guess. So I'm going to uh, use one of those and I'm gonna see if I can try to get you, the viewer, to guess uh, what I have um, on my card here. You're gonna start off with one of these main concept things here, like the main idea you know, if you think about like the old 20 questions, you know, animal, mineral, or, veg or vegetable, that would be kind of the main thing that you're trying to go for here. So in this case, let's say that I might want to put this here as my main concept. So you can see that I'm on that square right there. That square actually uh, means animals. So my main concept is an animal. Um, then from there, after I've selected a main concept, I can use cubes that are of the same color 
to um, sort of key off of that idea and give you some ideas of uh, describing what kind of animal it might be. So I might want to go over here to this part of the board that talks about the size of things and then I might want to uh, perhaps lay something down right here saying that it is a very tall animal. Uh, I might want to go ahead and also put another cube on here saying that it's a, a huge or a wide animal. So now you have some idea about what kind of animal this is. And um, from there, then I can start to use some of these other uh, pawns here that are subconcepts to give you some more ideas about um, the description of this particular animal that I'm trying to get you to guess. So uh, maybe I might want to go down here to this part that has the different body parts on it. And so maybe I'll grab one of these subconcepts and I will put it right here. And now this uh, particular square uh, means either ear, sound or hearing. So I could have uh, something, it could have something to do with the uh, animal's ears or it could have something to do with the, the sound that it's making. Yeah, you won't know that quite yet, but I'm gonna grab a, um, um, a, a, another cube here to give you an idea. So now I'm gonna go here and maybe I'm gonna say that this animal has very huge ears, okay? So that might give you an idea. Um, you know, and now I'm thinking about it, oh, maybe uh, I might wanna also go back to a green cube off of that main idea now that I'm thinking about it and say, oh, this animal also is the color gray. So I've got an animal here, over the, my main idea, an animal that is tall and huge and wide, and it's also gray, and then it also has ears that are very big. Now at this point you might uh, think that the answer is elephant, and you would be partially right, but the, that's not actually the answer. I would need to go a little bit farther and I might add another concept right here that says that this elephant, I'll go way up here, and I'll go and put something here which says fantasy or fictional character. And so that will give you the idea that it's an elephant. Well, hopefully you'll, you'll guess that it's an elephant. It's an animal with all those characteristics and it's a fictional character. And maybe I might even go a step farther and take a, bu a blue cube to go um, on that subconcept and say that it was in a movie. From that, I would hope that you would uh, be able to guess that a animal that is huge and wide and gray with large ears that is a fictional character uh, in a movie that the answer I'm looking for is Dumbo the Elephant. So this would be what, how, uh, this would how a round of concept would work, is that you're going to be placing uh, these little uh, tokens onto the board and you're gonna be listening to what the, uh, your other players are saying and what they're guessing. And you're not allowed to speak and you're not really allowed to give any gestures or um, make any sounds or anything, but you're gonna continue to put things on the board or perhaps if they're going the wrong direction, you can take things off the board and try to get the, the players to guess what the answer is. Um, if someone is able to guess the, the correct answer, they're gonna get two points the little two-point token here, and then the player who, uh, the player or players, if you're using the team uh, idea, are going to each get one point for uh, having correctly given uh, the, the right response there. So. Uh, that is how a round of concept works. And um, like I said, there are rules in the, in the rule book that talk about how many rounds that you do this or how many times you go around. Really, the, the main rules are that you have 12 of these double point counters and that um, once those are all gone, then that's gonna be the end of the game. But I think there's just really a lot of flexibility. If you can play this as much as you want, it's really almost more of an activity than a really hard and fast game. And uh, much like another game like Telestrations, the points don't really matter so much. It's just the fun that you have of trying to guess these things and get inside the minds of other players. So that is how uh, the, a game of concept works. Oh man, I like this game a lot. I think it is a very interesting uh, diversion from some of the other games in the get people to guess stuff genre. Um, I think the fact that you have to remain quiet and use just the, the, the uh, things that are on the board to try to get your message across, it accesses a whole uh, area of your brain that I've just, I don't think I've ever accessed in a game before. Um, and so it's it's a terrific amount of fun. It's a great activity. I think I you know I mentioned in the in the review that in the rules overview that uh, it's almost more of an activity 
activity than a game for points. You don't really care so much about the points that you're getting. Uh, it's, it's almost a great cooperative effort to try to figure out um, you know, all, all these you know, complex clues. I mean, it's everything simple as the example I gave of Dumbo the elephant to something as uh, real complex phrases. And um, I had one in, one in my game group one time, um, someone was able to get me to guess Al Capone <laughs> through all kinds of things going from you know, someone who's rich and who has, uh, is involved in conflict and who ended up in prison. Uh, all those things came into play. And so it was terrific fun and it felt very triumphant when you got the answer to that. Now, having said that, I have, uh, this game has been a winner, but uh, I have had some times when it's flopped a little bit. And I think because it accesses a particular part of the brain, um, it can, for people who just aren't good at um, putting together these concepts and subconcepts, uh, it just might be very difficult for someone to f look on a card and, and be able to translate that into these pawns and these little concepts on the board. Uh, so I have played a couple times where people have just not enjoyed it very much because they just get stuck and they their brains just can't function in that capacity for in, in that particular way. Um, in, in that respect, uh, I have seen some variants in the game where you can set a timer uh, for certain uh, for certain cards and for, you know, uh, I've even seen like a three round variant where, you know, you go around the table and do the easy uh, uh, clues, then you do the medium clues, then you do the hard clues with an increasing amount of time for each of those. Um, so I think that might be a helpful thing. Um, I think you definitely wanna have some sort of a time limit, even if it's a real light one, um, just to kind of keep the game moving. Um, but I, in general, I've had this be a real positive experience and I, I think it's great. I mean, I am, personally, I love this game and I think that everyone should have it in their collection, but uh, there, it might be a, f a few people that, um, that it just might not click with because it's just very abstract is the way that you're getting uh, folks to guess these things. But uh, as, as for me, Concept is an absolute winner. It's great. It's definitely worthy of its nomination for the Spiel des Jahres and uh, I think it's a, it's a great game. So. Uh, if you're, it sounds interesting to you, I would encourage you to check out Concept. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.